Learn to be super successful. Subscribe to my channel, me head. She's willing to carry 800,000 seller finance. Um, the terms that we were going to propose were 5% interest only for five years or so with the balloon payment and 1 million commercial debt. I estimated a higher interest rate, at least for our model, 11.5%, assuming we did SBA, but obviously I would be pushing for commercial uh, debt, which would be significantly lower on that. And I was getting roughly a 1.6 DSCR when I was calculating this. The point that they brought up, which I wasn't really thinking of, is I was blending everything together. And I was assuming, well, we'd be buying the property in this deal and we'd be buying the business. And so, you know, here's, you know, here's our EBITDA and this all works out. Um, but I was being told, you want to value them completely separately and you want to act as if you're paying rent to the property and see if the property alone will stand on its own two feet and if the business will stand on its own two feet and trying to find a balance there. But um, I'm curious to get your kind of input on things. because Well, I mean, I, well, I, I won't say I never, but I almost never bought them together. And, uh, and I've gone as far as to set up two different companies uh, to devise to, to uh, two separate pools of assets. Uh, but uh, my favorite was uh, one in the one that seemed to work the biggest with the big uh, uh, property valuation was if there were, in the in back of their head, they're going to use the property uh, proceeds to be part of their retirement plan, their 401k, their, you know, and when, when they do that, then you say, uh, okay, well, then I'll, I'll lease it at uh, approximately the same rate. I'm not buying it. Uh, when you lease it, you're not using it on your balance sheet, I mean, uh, to, uh, to, to get money. But that's not really what we want. What we want is the part of the asset is producing the income. Not dissimilar with a dental practice, okay? Every accountant in the, in the world has told their dental clients that you're building is your retirement plan, okay? And when you sell that, because you're gonna get a, 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 a appreciate more uh, for your uh, property and, uh, and your dental or your chiropractic practice, whatever it is, then you're ever gonna grow your business as a dentist or a chiropractor. So we'll, so we'll fine, we'll separate that, and, and the, uh, that'll be a, a different package, might even be a different LLC or a different GMBH, depending where you are in the world. And we will pay lease payments with three and five year options for me to buy. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen a three-year uh, exercise of that option, but I certainly have seen the five. But what happens is before the five years is you refinance the whole thing. You refinance the whole thing. Now, if you're going to refinance it and you, there's no uh, sticking point for you refinancing it the day before you exercise your option to buy it, okay, sometimes there are. Okay? Sometimes there's dragging six months, et cetera, et cetera. But if there isn't, then you, you know, you get, uh, you're cake and eat it too you're being able to refinance the practice and you be able to refinance the actual property. But uh, not too many properties, uh, uh, when you add the value of the property back, especially with hospitals, will you be able to uh, cover the debt service? Because like and with a hospital, uh, Harassi, uh, the, uh, the actual hospital, you know, the 50 room hospital was way more valuation uh, uh, valued than the actual practice of the uh, doctors are practicing. So that, that's my spew on, uh, yeah, but separate, you have to separate them, not together. So we were scheming to have kind of two different offers where I go back to them and I say, you know, one is where we just kind of stand firm and say, we're not going to buy the business, we'll, or the property, I should say, we do a lease option or something and trying to value it in that respect. Or even if they're completely firm on only wanting to sell the property, either we just say next and move on, or trying to see if there's any type of structure that can work with the real estate. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, the theory is behind giving them two options is they're going to pick one. But that doesn't, I, that, in today's world, uh, even though she's 73, she might be old school enough to think that maybe she's got to pick one. But I, I like the offer of just for the practice. You can always go back to them. Now, I wasn't much of a go back to a guy. I, I didn't do that. Uh, because I realized it was a really a numbers game. You know, you rarely when I'm told, you rarely when the hooker tells you it's five thousand dollars, you rarely go back to that. Okay, you just move on down the bar. Okay, uh, uh, but uh, in today's world, um, the uh, and it depends on who's advising her. Okay, if anybody, and if she doesn't have a lawyer, you got to get one, because uh, her uh, grandson or nephew or somebody's going to poke his ugly head up 
and say that uh, Granny got fucked. And when Granny goes to court, the Granny almost always wins. I mean, you got to be a real witch whoremonger to not win if you're 73 years old. Okay. Um, the uh, so I would I would just uh, does she have a, are you at the point that you know she has advisors yet? Pre LOI, uh, and I don't believe she has. Uh, she has professionals that she's engaged for her business, but I don't think she's really engaged them seriously as okay, far well, as representing. You, you, you should, she should explore this with them because you won't get to step two as soon as they, they can blow it out of the water. It's premature uh, to think that you have any kind of uh, lasting deal until somebody blesses it or somebody gets engaged in her representation. This other deal I'm going to show you off, off the camera. Um, she didn't engage a lawyer until after the LOI was signed. Uh, and that was a mistake I made. I didn't really, I guess, suppose it wasn't in the front of my mind, realizing the importance of them getting that representation early on. Um, but most of the people I talk to, they either have no representation, they have no lawyer or something like that. So are you just halting moving yeah, forward well, I mean, to deal be, at all? Or? Because at the end of the day, they um, forget that they go to court, forget the deal closes, okay? Then it's a, it's a no win for you. You absolutely lose. I mean, you're not going to win. But the um, uh, virtually all the case law stands for the, the, the old person with no representation. The only person that I've seen get away with it, and that's the wrong term, like she did something wrong, is a Viking bitch. She's done four, five, or six deals where, you know, I trust you, I want your lawyer. And, I, and she always says, then they have to sign a disclaimer. I know I'm not getting a lawyer. I know I'm using her lawyer, blah, 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 blah. Um, but I mean, the Viking bitch is not, you know, she's doing pretty decent deals for the seller, you know, uh, and not raping him. Wait, I've got all the guys I've trained that use it like a license to steal. You don't need, I mean, I have all the forms right here. Um, and I've got those guys, believe me. The, uh, and they have, you know, no conscience. May I make one point to this deal? Um, he told us that the seller, because I often notices, notice that the seller tries to sell himself as motivated. So she got an offer for 1.6 million. She called you and cried on the phone and said, I'm desperate, I want to sell. If she would be motivated, she would have sold for 1.6. For 200,000, it's 10%. So I yeah, think but, uh, the, he, he, uh, some of these people don't need acting lessons because they're good at, you know, they're terrific actors. Uh, the, but if it pencils out at 1.8, you know, in the, in the scope of things, it's not a fart in the wind. It's, you know, uh, it's $200,000. Uh, but over the lifetime of your portfolio, by the time you exit, you know, this asset's going to be worth a lot more than 1.8. Um, he, he's got a valid point. Uh, a lot of people cry wolf when there's no wolf there. Yeah, but I mean, but once you get in the, you know, uh, in the scheme thing, he's done a bunch of deals, okay? So he's got a momentum, next, he's got a momentum. When you're struggling to do your first or second deal, uh, you don't have the luxury of that. Uh, you, uh, and you no normally don't think in those luxurious terms. You want to get the deal done. Uh, now, I was, uh, you know, of the belief, and I still, still am, uh, the only thing uh, that I get pissed off about is they rob me of my time. Okay, I felt that way when I was 50, you know, uh, and now I'm almost 80, uh, they're, they're robbing you of your time. So I used to get upset about that. Um, and, uh, and I quite often told them I got upset about it. Um, there's a case coming up with a Chinese woman from Australia that has been yanked around by a Vietnamese guy. And it's a model that the Chinese normally use, but we're gonna explain it to everybody and how the uh, Koreans and a lot of the guys use it. They get a free valuation of the business. They don't sell it to you, okay? And normally they have two or three businesses, the numbers are amalgamated. And so to get the audit of the one business, you have to separate the, uh, the numbers for the other two businesses. So they get three evaluations for nothing, and then they don't do it. It's a Chinese trick, I'm telling you. I've been up against it 30, 40 times. So, but that's not this, but I'm just, and uh, the guy uh, was 80 or 82, I forget. But he's been doing the same thing for 60 years because the Chinese are low to pay uh, uh, 
fees. Well, not, not everybody's happy to pay fees, but the Chinese go out of their way to make sure you, uh, I've seen many, many dozens of deals. Well, the, the, the non-Chinese absorbs all the fees. And they think they're absorbing all the fees because they're getting such a great deal. But the real numbers come out, they didn't do such a great deal. Yeah, but I'd go back and, you know. My, to comment on what he said, supposedly the answer was she, are, in her mind, obviously they think their business is worth a lot more than it actually is. Everybody does. She yeah. thinks the 1.8 is already a discount. And so she got uh, offended or whatever, didn't like uh, the buyer well, 1.6. Yeah, when you ask them, based on what rationale is it uh, uh, 1.6 or 1.8, less than it's worth? And they come up with some foot, you know, well, bullshit. I, I used the leverage of her wanting the 1.8 million in order to get the almost half 50% seller finance. But I think one of the ideas that I want to do going back when talking to her is, again, pushing on doing a lease option on the real estate. But then I, I am, I want to get your opinion on this, but potentially open to paying more if she could do 100% self finance on the going concern business. Because uh, I figured if we have no equity in the deal, we're not paying for it, and we could structure it in a way that cash flows. Well, well, I mean, the... Um, hmm. Whatever uh, she would do for seller finance, you're going to pay her more money than if she put the money in the bank. Okay, uh, uh, if she puts the money in the bank. She's going to get two percent, three percent. Two years ago, she got a half a percent. Okay, uh, you have to ask her, what is she going to use the cash for? I'm going to put it. In, if, if you hope and pray, she says, I'm going to put it in the bank and use it for retirement. Well, how much money are you going to get? She may not know. Well, you can check around with banks, but you're going to get two or three percent, unless they buy, they buy a CD or a, a treasury note or some government equivalent. And even the thirty years are getting a four and a quarter, four and a half. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, I could give you six and a half. Well, I was referencing the price more than the no, interest no, rate. I'm, okay. I'm, 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 I'm going to cover that. I could give you six and a half, and and they don't think in that terms, in that terms that they're going to get t twice as much interest monthly. Uh, and that's one of the reasons TK did $348 million in business. Because uh, not everybody, but most everybody that he, he did, I think, 11, de nine deals, eight deals, were going to put the money in the bank and retire off of and get, you know, 2%. And he said, and he felt like a, a superman, I'll give you 5%. And now he wouldn't do that. Now he'd give him 7 because the interest rates are going And they just fell in line because he could show them, well, that's $600,000 more, blah, blah, blah. And, and that's how he did it, you know. And uh, the uh, you just sell it as you'll get a pension, you earn interest yeah, on yeah, your money. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Now I don't sell it like some of the kids. It's reducing taxes, it's not reducing shit on taxes. What it does is it, it lengthens the time you have to pay taxes. But some countries in the world, when you're taxed on the amount, whether you get it or not, even if it's a long-term payment, you know, Germany being one of, I know I've been down that road. I used to make presentations, and then I, I wound up. I told him a lie, you know, and so, so I, but I went back with my hat in my hand, you know, my tail between my legs, and some of them accepted it very professionally, but two or three, I can still remember getting thrown out of the building, thrown out of the house, uh, because you lied to us, uh, and then I started, I never used the word technically again, and when people say technically, because I used to use technically, there's nothing technical about a lie. And so I don't use that word. Whenever somebody, uh, in fact, uh, uh, EJ, he, one of his favorite words is technically. So every time he says fucking, one, every fucking time he says technically, I think back 30, 40 years ago when I, you know, they said, you lied. No, no, technically I didn't. No, you lied. So every time he says technically, I think of that. Um, but um, yeah, but I mean, there's a, she needs representation. And where is she going to put the money? Uh, Etc. But the uh, where in, uh, in New Mexico? Silver City. I don't know where that where, was. That near? No, no fucking clue. Silver City. My dad was born in Deming, New Mexico. I told you about the lawyer that is now the uh, uh, mobile home park, park king of New Mexico. He gave up. Uh, he's a recovering lawyer. Uh, but New Mexico is about as rural America as you can get. In Kansas and a couple places like that, and of course um, with John, uh, uh, Dr. Robinson, we have our uh, two of our assets in, in Tulsa and Oklahoma City. Uh, um, 
apparently truck drivers and cowboys, it's imperative that they have a stiff dick. And, and believe me, I've had that shot one time and I couldn't do that every day. I shot in your dick. I mean, and it's and the most sensitive part of your penis. You take the shot and the needle is two and a half inches. Ooh. Ooh. That's the one you self inject? Yep. Yeah, and I mean, I did it once for the story. It wasn't a story, but by accident because I had a, uh, a drainage pipe there. And for whatever reason, God deemed me to have an erection with that fucking pipe in me. And I mean, if I had been captured in Vietnam, I would have told him everything. They stick that pipe on me just one time. I, I, I would have spilled my guts. And uh, the, uh, yeah, but. Okay, it's time to go down. Okay?